Right, we're live and recording. All right. Recording. All right. All right. I want to introduce my guests. Starting to my right, we got the lovely Miriam. How Hello. You doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Long time no see, Miriam. Yeah, I know. It's yes. great to be here. All right. All right. And to her right, we got Brother Yanga. That's good. That's good. Peace. In his house. Yeah. It's good to be here, man. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. I appreciate it. Dude. And I'm glad you're wearing the Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Button today. Yeah. Free for rep revolutionary all, all the time, yes, full sir. time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the elder revolutionary, Gedon Ben Israel, king of the Hebrew Israelites. Servant no to servants. this powerful panel right here, brother Yanga, beautiful sister Miriam, and the black sun has yeah. risen. <laughs> all right, all right. So today I want to revisit the Endless War Act because Barack Obama, he's cranking up the drones, <laughs> going into other countries, taking out so-called Islamist extremists, which when the people are protesting are men, women, and children that are, you know, just living their lives. And Miriam, can you, because I know in Palestine, you, you guys are getting the worst. Oh yeah, Obama. definitely. There are drones actually right now flying over Gaza. Mm. So, um, for Palestinians in Gaza were killed just a few days ago, right. and fishermen were being shot at from the coast. Mm. Yes, well, and and um, a Palestinian in Janine, but that is in the West Bank. Mm. Yes. Right, and I'm 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 listening to this because mm. every time I listen to the news, it's you know children. Exactly, and elders. and something to know about drones is that. Um, the U.S. and Israel pride themselves on the fact that these drones are so accurate that they're able to see the colors of these women's headscarves, of their mm. hijabs. Mm. And then so when you have um, civilian casualties, when you have women, the elderly, and children being killed, mm -hmm. it begs the question, if your drones are so accurate, then are you accurately killing civilians? Mm. Therefore, it's not mm -hmm. a mistake when these civilians are killed. Right, because mm -hmm. according to Obama, he said that we're not killing civilians. Oh, no. Hmm. They know they're killing civilians. And um, that's what we were talking about with Malala and Nabila. Malala. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Malala. Oh, well, um, so I believe it was about two weeks ago mm -hmm. that Malala came to the United States. She was um, a girl, um, a Pakistani girl mm -hmm. that was um, hurt by the Taliban. They shot her because right. she was promoting education. Hmm. And so she came to the United States. She came to speak to Barack Obama. And um, she actually said that Barack Obama was her role model. Really? Which is a shame, exactly. Oh, it's a wow. shame when he is responsible for killing her people and for killing Muslims, other Arabs, other Middle Easterners. She's telling him, you are the murderer of my people and I admire you. Wow. Exactly. So then just this past <laughs> week, um, a Pakistani girl, her name is Nabila, yes. her grandmother was killed in a drone strike. Mm. So she came to Congress to advocate against this, to say to tell her story about what happened, yes. and only five congressmen came to hear her. Actually, I only heard four showed up. Oh, so I heard five, five. from oh, okay. Al Jazeera. Yeah, I heard five. Oh, okay, well, yeah. credit to that one extra. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. So it was only five. So whereas you have one girl that's getting international publicity, a visit from Barack Obama, mm -hmm. you have one girl who was actually hurt from the United States, only being heard by five congressmen. Wow. Yeah. This is our Congress. Exactly. Hmm. Brother Yanga. Yeah, what's here? Barack Obama said, we're not killing civilians. We're not killing young children. We're killing extremists. Islam um, is extremists, terrorists. Right. Man, I don't know how to speak to that. I think that Sister Mariam uh, uh, broke it down adequately. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we can say. I think that we as the American public, though, and specifically and in particularly particularly us as Africans here in America, the black man and woman here in America should definitely speak out to the atrocities happening internationally. Right. Until we understand our position globally and speak out against oppression globally, mm -hmm. we will always be faced uh, uh, with the problem of having our issue of racism and discrimination, blatant discrimination, mm -hmm. as a domestic problem. Mm -hmm. And we don't want, we want, I think that it's time for us to elevate our issue as our counterparts, the revolutionaries in Palestine and mm -hmm. other, other places that are being oppressed to a global international issue. Mm -hmm. So this should be, you know, my whole thing with being invited here and hearing all these things, beside the personal interest of taking of being a Muslim, but just as being an African here in America, uh, that when we see oppression happening worldwide, mm -hmm. that we will be amiss. In fact, we will be foolish, you know, not to address it 
because our time is like, what's the old saying, today my neighbor, tomorrow me? Yes, right. So we have to really, I think that we really have to take that approach and, and, and allow it to manifest it to where it's more than just a slogan. Well, you're, you're a triple terrorist. <laughs> According to them. You're, you're, okay. a, you're a black nationalist, you're a yeah, black man, yeah. and you're Muslim. Yeah. Mm. You're a triple threat. There. Yeah, according to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, one of the things that saddens me is the fact that my... Uh, uh, religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs have been put on the put on the thing as even being extremists or being terrorists. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a little confused, Jenga. What defines an extremist? That's what I'd like to know. Just being Muslim. Right. Exactly. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to go back. So I, my thing would be, you know, blame my Abu. You'd have to take it back to my father. So when the time that we uh, when we allow ourselves, and this is any faith, mm -hmm. this is any faith. Mm -hmm. When you see a people being persecuted because of their faith, then you should have, and most of the world faith and the majority, uh, the faiths that make up the majority population of the world, speak out against injustices against any people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we allow ourselves or we allow people to defy our enemy and tell us who our enemy is because of their way of getting to the most high and enacting moral and ethical practices on the earth, then we have a problem. If you can la label me a terrorist, and you label me a terrorist for my belief and turn around and tell me that it's okay for men to kiss in the street and hold hands in the street and me to tell my son that don't bring this to my house or this is not acceptable to mm -hmm. me or to our way of living mm -hmm. and I'm labeled as a terrorist and I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But Yanga, mm -hmm. do you understand that the Pentagon has, what they, they have a division where they have gay agents? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Gay well, agents? Yeah, well when you're living, when you're living in a uh, capitalist society, then it's all about the dollar. It's profit mm -hmm. over people. Mm -hmm. You understand okay. what I'm saying? It's not for it's not for what's good for society, mm -hmm. but it's what makes this particular government or this particular regime the most money. Mm -hmm. So common sense goes out the window. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what we're facing. Right. But what I'm what I'm what I'm I'm showing a strategy here because if you have Islamists, mm -hmm. you know, like you know, and then and you know, just I mean, right. People like ourselves, and we just say, you know, they, I think they look for weaknesses, like, you know, oh, you know, if we talk about gay people, if we talk about these people, that people, then the Pentagon writes that down and says, mm -hmm. okay, well, we're going to put this group together, and we're going to seek out whether we go over in, the, you know, in the Palestine or mm -hmm. Pakistan, and we're going to find these people so they can topple that government, mm -hmm. you know, like the uh, Gaddafi, you know, yeah. Yeah. providing for his people. We can't have that. Right, so we have to top it. You know, America doesn't like well, that's their ex Well, that's their export, militarism. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? If it isn't, if it isn't, if their so-called democracies and policies are military-backed, then they don't believe, and basically what's happening here is you're calling the world ignorant. You don't say that the world can handle their own affairs. Mm -hmm. You're going into things, you're backing policies, and it all goes back to politics. Mm -hmm. It's just like with, and we'll go back to America, because I'm always interested in hearing what's going on with our brothers and sisters in Palestine, mm -hmm. that we go back to that case. Mm -hmm. Due to lobbyists and uh, uh, cleverly placed economists amongst uh, other ethnicities, especially the Zionists, mm -hmm. that they forge such lobbyists and policies policies that even if they profess their God has given them the right to land are things that are built on no substantial evidence whatsoever. We back it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's all it's all capital. It's all money is because they just put themselves in a place to say, if you don't back our play, we will cripple this this country. Well, Gideon, Israel's doing exactly what your Bible's telling them to do, right? Wow. Claim the land in the name of God. I said, in the land of the most high. He told us this is our land. Well, first of all, let me just give the respect to the creator right. for you and for Miriam and Brother Yanga. Let me just say this, man. You have inflections of Malcolm in your intellect as well as your articulation. You, it's just Thank very you. impressive. It's re resonating, Mal oozing Malcolm. <laughs> 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 no doubt. Now, when we talk about this issue of the Endless War Act on the back of capitalism, mm -hmm. a militarized version of global, uh, what can I say, incarceration. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we're looking at, the incarcerating. About global uh, extermination. Ex incarceration oh. first, okay. then ex extermination. Isn't that the way they did uh, with the so-called Jews that were uh, in the Auschwitz, Buchenheim, uh, the crematoriums that were set up, they interned them first. Well, that's funny then I told they executed. the other day that Benjamin Netanyahu was like the Israeli Hitler. <laughs> well, you have to look at the metaphor and the analogies and the similarities of the control and the wanton desire to kill 
So the In This War Act that you referenced is really a, a perpetuation of American ideology, mm. which is world domination on the backdrop of world oppression. So this is just a, a, a composite of capitalism and its militarization of the world as well as its uh, oppression of its population for ultimate extermination. But mm. as Jenga says, you know, the world is ignorant. We have to guide the world. And well, better, you know, we have to make the world moral. You know, it's interesting because a lot of times we say we are ignorant, but right. yet we reflect a portion of the populace that, that we say is ignorant. So mm -hmm. if in fact we have knowledge, there are others like us that have knowledge as well. It's just that our people are forced into position like the Yiddish term goyim. It's a simple term that reflect, re relates to the people as cattle. The people are being herded by fear, mm. and the Endless War Act is a part of the, and what, it is, what is it called? An act. Right. What do actors do? They act. Mm. They act like they're concerned about perpetuating peace, love, unity, and, and oneness for all. But in reality, it is in fact what? An act. Mm -hmm. The reality is they want to militarize the world and control all its resources. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's something that I wanted to touch on. A lot of people always mention that the U.S. is the world's policeman and they're right. only trying to help and exactly. then things right. go astray. That is not true. And I hear this all the time that, oh, the U.S. tried democracy in IDOC, but IDOCs are just so ignorant. They just couldn't get it. They just couldn't get this concept of democracy and freedom. Democracy and freedom doesn't come through shock and all bombs. It doesn't exactly. come through missiles. It doesn't come through drones. It doesn't come through drones dropping depleted uranium and white phosphorus on right. innocent civilians. Thank you. you know, if you came and told me our democracy is killing your people, then I hate your democracy. I don't right. want your democracy. Mm -hmm. And that that's the problem. I hear this all the time, especially in the U.S., that, you know, people who don't know any better are just like, the U.S. tried. They couldn't. They tried, and it just didn't work. The people just couldn't get it. People can mm. have democracy. People can have freedom, but you don't want them to. And that's why you give it to them in that form. Mm. You know, and I also wanted to mention briefly in reference to the drones because they just had the, first of all, under President Obama, the drone warrior is given the highest award above the Medal of Honor for drone kills. Right. And now you've got people who have been hit by drones going to the world court like Malcolm did based on human rights. And it's a referencing the number of people that have been killed by drones. Mm. So this issue of drone technology and the strikes against humanity mm. is starting to come back on the, the heads of the militarized gangsters that run Washington. Um, and this is kind of off topic, but I wanted to go back when you were talking about isn't um, what Israel is doing right now, isn't that following Right. Where God isn't that following the Torah. That's actually not true right. because in the Old Testament, according to Jews, you are supposed they are supposed to get Israel through peaceful means, not mm -hmm. by force. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the way that the Jews were able to um, seize Palestinian lands is through ethnic cleansing, through mm -hmm. kicking people out of their homes. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have a lot of rabbis right now. There are even many pictures of rabbis burning their Israeli passports mm. because they know it's wrong. They know that this is not the true Jewish way. Zionism is not Judaism. Right. Oh, mm. right. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Absolutely. Oh, now we're getting into uh, Zionism. Yeah, it has, it has Absolutely. nothing to do with being, being a good Jew means not being a Zionist. It's absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I yeah. think that that's important to make that distinction mm -hmm. so that the people don't think that, uh, um, you know, because that's one of the, the, the best weapons that they have that you're anti-jewish you're anti-semitic and right. we're not that we're anti-zionist exactly and we're, we're, we're against that ideology and philosophy as a political practice mm -hmm. you know a practice put into put into play mm. well I, I need to address that because my sister miriam really brought me back to the original question that you asked which was it's very important and and it, it and it's really a delicate balancing act when you deal with the biblical text in terms of how the creator was going to set his people up the palestinians quote unquote and return them back to their land see i'm a palestinian as i've said on previous shows we like you are out of our land and out of our mind because we don't know 
who we are as a people. At least you do. You do know where your land so, is. So who is we that you... So when I say we, I'm talking about the so-called African-American. I'm sorry, Negro. I'm sorry, color. I'm sorry, <laughs> black. I'm okay. sorry. You understand? Okay, so to simplify it, you're saying black people are entitled to Palestine. No, I'm saying black people, the, the land that was given our ancestors was from the River Nile to the Great River Euphrates. And contrary to uh, belief, it is going to be taken forcefully. The saints what? are going to take the kingdom. To the Euphrates. So you're saying Middle Eastern land is black. Sure. Not and sure. what about Africa? Who is that for? Uh, Africa is a part of it. See, the, the boundaries that were written uh, were set up by men who conquered lands that were not originally theirs. The migration from the Noah, the story of Noah showed the people that are, everybody's in their own land except one people, and that's the Palestinians. And mm -hmm. that, the, the dark skin and the light skin. Look at him. Well, I'm, oh, oh, go sorry. ahead, John. Yeah, no, no, please, please. I love the dear brother, and you have, but I have always said emphatically that I'm a, I am a black nationalist. I am an African here in America. A crime has been committed. I've been forcefully brought here. That's right. And to deny, I can't deny a mixed ancestry, some of the oppressive white blood of Native American blood, the indigenous people blood. And no disrespect to my brothers and sisters in Palestine, but I'm not a Palestinian. Right. No, a, no disrespect. <laughs> <at all. laughs> as, as a revolutionary, I should identify with, I should uh, sympathize and empathize and, and even, you know, help raise protest, money and economics to the oppression that is taking place here. Right. What ends up happening is a lot of BS gets hid behind, behind uh, scriptures mm -hmm. and it's all political. Right. We understand that the people who have come and who have claimed the illegal state of Israel as a state now, mm -hmm. uh, it's all political. They're backed by political might and That's muster. Right. They're backed by uh, U.S. interests. And over Great in the Britain. Mid and Great Britain by those interests that they have over in the Middle East. Absolutely. There's nothing holy about what's taking place right, right now. Truly. You understand? I don't think that anybody's Lord, anybody's God would advocate right. the crimes and atrocities that are being done to uh, men, women, and children hmm. in the name of a God. If right. then, then you really might want to question question this God. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially when the it's so lopsided. You tank against a rock. Come mm. on, and there's no outcry against that. Right. It is so lopsided. Certainly. Yeah. So I say, and, and 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 I've always, and when you study God historically, he's always been for the underdog. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, Absolutely. So keep our eyes open. Exactly. I think that what we have to do, have to understand, as black people here in America, as a misplaced nation, mm -hmm. a nation within a nation, mm -hmm. that we have to start to pull our resources economically and politically and education, uh, in our education-wise, mm -hmm. so that we can be a power factor here. Sure. So the atrocities taking place worldwide, we can say, look, they stop or we set, shut down a certain industry, mm -hmm. that we start to establish trade and things with different uh, countries. Even our brothers and sisters from the land from which I came, Africa, but even then, me being a strong nationalist, and I am a Pan-Africanist mm -hmm. to an extent, I believe that wherever you find people of color, that we should aid and assist because we're one people. Absolutely. But being a strong nationalist, whose people have died and spilled blood over here and helped build this country, that is incumbent upon us to take uh, control mm -hmm. of the things that's taking place here. You know what I'm saying? And just like my man Ernesto Che Guevara said, he said that there will be no physical revolution. He said armed revolution as long as there's a farce of democracy. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is encourage our people to participate wholly and fully in a political process. Mm -hmm. And then once they see that the, the political process is a joke, mm -hmm. then they'll start to look to alternatives to bring about a change. They'll be frustrated and they'll be upset. Yeah. But right. until, until we get educated politically, we will always try to back our arguments mm. up with scripture. And scriptures mm. are left up to the interpretation of men. You know how many sheikhs in Islam right. can yeah. take a scripture and sure. justify this action, that action. Exactly. But yeah. it's based on their cultural practices, their social economic conditions and things of this nature. So even us as Africans here in America with the religion of Islam, sticking to the basic tenements and principles of Tawheed and accepting Muhammad as the messenger of God, mm -hmm. then we should also take the things, the akam, the rules and regulations and jurisprudence, and apply them socially and economically and morally to how they specifically affect us and will empower us mm -hmm. as a people. Right. Well, you, go ahead. I, well, well, yes, sir. I, I just want to say one thing about the scriptures mm -hmm. claiming any race mm -hmm. to any land as a, mm -hmm. as a human patriot. Mm -hmm. I'm a human patriot. Yes, sir. And I, I question anything that gives anybody authority mm -hmm. to take any land. 
Yes, sir. Like, because I'm, I'm gonna say, well, well, who who authorized that? You know, get him. I mean, uh, you know, you keep it? saying the Most High, but I can't verify. Atomic it. technology, I think, is what you <laughs> said. <laughs> and no, you got the ball. <laughs> There's your authorization <laughs> right there, baby. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, that's something about Islam. In Islam, Palestine is for Muslims, Jews, and Christians. It's hmm. for anybody of any faith. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's hmm. for a monotheistic God. Absolutely. And then we'll yeah. Instead of um, Judaism, and this isn't Judaism, this is Zionism, actually, mm -hmm. that restricts it only to Jews. Mm -hmm. Actually, most Palestinians advocate for a state mm -hmm. with equality amongst Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Mm -hmm. Zionism advocates for the exact opposite. Now, and I, is there anybody that, that, that disagrees with that? Because the obviously. Pentagon will always always seek out that weak link meaning if you guys mm -hmm. discriminate against any ideology yeah. mm -hmm. they're going to seek them out and form a whole even, even exactly. hamas who right. is considered a terrorist organization by pretty much the entire western world believes in equality amongst different religions mm -hmm. even in gaza which is over 90 percent muslim you do have that small christian population that is able to live with the same rights as their muslim brothers and I sisters one of the things that the view is like what Sister Maryam said is about Islam. It's mm -hmm. it, she says, like she says, the land is open to all the people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we can't deny and negate the responsibility of the host people of that land. Exactly. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like it's oh, Palestine may be open to all the people, mm -hmm. but God has placed Palestinians in Palestine, so they are the host for that. It's like when you right. make Hajj, you go to Mecca, you expect right. the Saudis to host you there. Exactly. You go to the land, you're welcome, come do the things, but we host, we police. It's just like if I'm in Africa, it can mm -hmm. be an Islamic country as it wants to be. Mm -hmm. Everyone's welcome, but as being an African or here in America, being a black man here in America, don't come to my land with your foolishness mm -hmm. because God has placed me in this land and I'm mm -hmm. going to be the host of this land according mm -hmm to the rules and regulations that this land is run by. Mm. So it's not, nationalism mm -hmm. is not a bad, filthy word. Mm. It's simply exactly. practicing what is natural. And mm -hmm. people gravitate to um, people whom they can identify with. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? The problem comes if you do that to the exclusion mm -hmm. of other groups. Now let me just say okay. this, because Black Sun, you without, you didn't even know it, you are an ambassador, an international ambassador for the unification of people who have been denied knowledge of self as well as their geographic sovereignty. Okay. Palestinian, Hebrew, you and only you with the power and intellect that you have was able to bring those two ideologies together on this very television set where thousands or however many millions of people may be watching through internet and various other modes of so the, the, it starts with the average everyday individual that understands there's a problem. Mm -hmm. She had the courage to come on this set and speak with us. Right. Most of people come to us, as specifically woolly haired melanated men, and look at us as terrorists themselves. Well, we we are, <laughs> so right. they right. say, right. we're right. terrorists right. only if you know something other than what they told right. you. Right. We're, we're right. fashion terrorists. Right. Right. Okay. Right. You know, right. so what you're doing right now is setting the groundwork for a new agenda, a new paradigm, a new way of thinking, a world community coming together as one. Well, it's a beautiful it's, thing. It's simple. I mean, you need allies mm -hmm. in any type of uh, situation, you know, mm -hmm. by... Sounds like politicians to me. <laughs> but you got to know what you're fighting for. <laughs> okay. it's, it's just like, you know, like we was talking about the Endless War Act. One of the problems right. that we have, well, you have to know what you're fighting for. Right. That uh, according to this authorization of the military power and stuff that it was right. given to them to, uh, what was it, to deal with people who had some ties with 9-11? Right. Or something like that's that. That's what they created. Well, they just, exactly. they just, they just yeah. said yeah. Now but they can take you off the street, exactly. no due process. Because look how right. they got, look how they talk. Now they're talking to people who wasn't even around. Hello. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Um, Al Shabbat, mm. which simply means the youth. Mm -hmm. And I mean, pay attention to this, brothers and sisters, the youth. That's what they're coming after. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If we don't provide a way for the youth to express their anger and discontent with the uh, forms of government, they will do it Absolutely. on their own. And, you, and we see that. But I say that to say that. All of that is we first have to clearly defy who we are and know what we're fighting for. Certainly. See, once you know who you are, then you have to start knowing your history. Like the thing going on in Palestine with our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. one of the reasons that that will be continuous and you will always have a resistance movement uh, born every moment mm -hmm. out of uh, Palestine is mm -hmm. because they're very culture, not just yes. the land. You know, we yes. say the land thing, yes. but the very culture, the very way of a people yes. are being attacked. Yes. Once we understand that our very way, our culture, our, the, the, our essence yes. have been attacked, 
then we'll start to know what we're fighting for. And it becomes, you know, being a Black Panther, it's more than just being cool or being the latest trend. You understand that it is fighting for your very survival Absolutely. and your existence. You know, it's funny because I've had people, you know, tell me, well, the Arab Spring, what's that got to do with us? But then, like, let's look at Egypt. Mm -hmm. Let's look at how they overthrew uh, Mohammed Morsi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was an elected process. Right. Mm -hmm. But now we got the situation with the new Black Panther Party mm -hmm. declaring martial law. Mm -hmm. Where they do that at? That, that's, that's the craziest thing. I mean, but you talk about something <laughs> right. to fight for. Right. I mean, you, you, Absolutely. I, mean, I think that, you know, like I said, what's unfortunate is that our people suffer from a, uh, and you know what, Mary and I had a good conversation when all of us were on, and she said something that I thought was very f profound. Mm -hmm. You have the leaders who have fought so long Mm -hmm. And become tired right. that a lot of the uh, things that wasn't that we wouldn't even accept it in the beginning mm -hmm. are starting to look like you know maybe negotiating chips. Right. Maybe we right. should consider this. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. a lot of and, and like she said, we we haven't considered their mental fatigue, their right. physical fatigue, the exactly. economic losses, the physical losses, mm -hmm. and everything. So it makes them want to look into other options mm -hmm. to bring about a, some type of resolution, mm -hmm. even if it isn't mm -hmm. in the best interest of the people, right. or it's totally mm -hmm. uh, giving up a lot of what we asked for. Exactly. So that's what we have found has happened in the New Black Panther Party. Mm. I think that the New Black Panther Party has left the idea, revolutionary ideology, uh, have left the way of ideal, ideologically wise, revolutionary black nationalism, mm -hmm. and the key to that being revolutionary. Mm -hmm. They've set themselves up as a theocracy, mm -hmm. and the New Black Panther Party is clearly and strictly a political defense party. Exactly. And by them setting themselves up as a theocracy in the like of the Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. they have uh, taken the liberties to take our right to vote for our leaderships after mm -hmm. Chairman Malik Zulu Shabazz has stepped down. Mm. They had, yeah, they had taken our right to elect our leadership and they have appointed us a leader. Mm. Now, this mm. is not a personal attack against the brother that they have appointed. I'm Look sure out. that he's overqualified. Right. But to take our rights, mm. to say that we're not intelligent enough to pick whom we want to lead us, Ugh. and then to insult us by saying we have declared martial law and have suspended national elections. Mm. But you want us to come into the community and say that we're a, a group, a freedom fighter group, right. advocating uh, we fight for uh, democracy and right. liberation of our people, mm -hmm. but yet we don't even allow to point our own leaders. You wow. know, the people are not wow. foolish. You know, that reminds me of Detroit. Right. Now. I first regained, gained respect for the New Black Panther Party after I saw the DVD that featured Dr. Khalid Muhammad mm -hmm. right. and his powerful presence and spiritual acumen that really was a magnetizing force that made people gravitate to him. He's a straight soldier, right. mm -hmm. straight up, and mm -hmm. used the scripture the whole night, mm -hmm. which most Muslim brothers use the scripture as well. Mm -hmm. So, but when I saw, I, uh, he, he transitioned. And I don't know why he transitioned. It seems like it was a lot going mm -hmm. on right. with this powerful brother mm -hmm. that that he was so strong that they had to bring him down. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you and see, that's the type of thing that's happening among our groups. Mm -hmm. When we raise up a leader of powerful presence, it's the internal struggles that create the atmosphere. Like uh, the so, minister said, mm -hmm. he created the atmosphere for the death of Malcolm. Yeah. Right. You understand? So it's that infighting, that inability to unite. That's why it takes you. See, we would love, I'd love to be able to have a Palestinian brother on, but it took the courage of the Palestinian woman mm -hmm. to come forward to speak to another brother and accept his assertion that he is a Palestinian. Well, maybe you haven't said that. I've said that on this, that I'm a Palestinian, but it's these women and her, her, her mother, her sister, this a family connection. Mm -hmm. Right. When the men come together and can start having the same foresight to include a world community in their struggle, they will find that they have people that will stand well, with them. Unfortunately, Gideon, but the only thing is that as a strategist, I look for things that work. And I had a discussion with Yanga. It's like, if I can't find revolutionaries within our race, I'm going to find them wherever. So it's about being a revolutionary first and foremost. Now, but see, you, you, what you know it or not, you're being led by the spirit and you don't even yeah. know it. And I'm being <laughs> led you know, by to, my to, to address, and I don't want to, you know, Oliver, I'm sure the sister has more to, to share with us, but yes. I want to address the Collard thing. Yes. Dr. Collard absolutely was, at Dr. Collard's time was, man, it was a wonderful time for the, for the new Black Panther Party. It was absolutely. a revitalization. It was much needed because he addressed spiritual, moral, and ethical issues. Mm. Right. 
But like all things, evolution, you have to have evolution. You have to evolve. Exactly. Once we had a man to start to address our home lives and the, the way that we should uh, conduct ourselves with our wives and our mm -hmm. children and to show us more in ethical ways, mm -hmm. it was time to address and move on to more revolutionary understanding. Hmm. To start to address community politically and socially and economically and these other things. And mm -hmm. what happens is that it becomes, for a lot of brothers and sisters who set up these uh, hierarchies and mm -hmm. monarchies, mm -hmm. it becomes a paycheck. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Right. And the exactly. revolutionary becomes a threat to that very system that has that they've been eating on for so long because Teach. we're here about to empower the people. Teach. One of the right. things I learned about Hamas, like we had always heard they were a terrorist organization. Right. And a lot of people think just a religious organization. But when you looked into and studied these organizations like that, they had schools, they had yes. hospitals, exactly. yes. they had things, they, they were interacting. I read somewhere it said what made them so powerful was a basic political understanding concept, a, a spiritual, a strong spiritual concept, and social program. And the people elected them duly well, through the democratic through, through process. The social, through, through a lot of their social programs. So us is what I'm saying here is black men and women in America that Though we feed our social, uh, feed our spirit, and we go to our churches and our mosques and uh, masjids and so on, and, and synagogues and so on and so forth. That's very important to act as a moral compass, but we can't forget our political and social responsibilities to the earth and to humanity. We Absolutely. can't play these problems away. Absolutely, we have to. Right. We have to get out there and do our thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Miriam, because I'm I'm trying to get down to the core problem because just as Yangan spoke about the new Black Panther Party and. I know Gideon doesn't agree with the American political party as far as voting. Mm -hmm. What was the problem? I mean, Egypt, let's go to Egypt. Okay. You know, they voted Muhammad Morsi in the Muslim Brotherhood, but then you had an uprising. What, what was the problem? I mean, this, these people, they were elected. What is the problem that you have this other group of people that just, I mean, you had an electoral mm -hmm. process that went down. Yeah. But then you have people that are disgruntled. So, I mean, how do we yeah. solve it? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. from the start, the Egyptian people only had two choices. They had Morsi, who right. was part of the Muslim Brotherhood. He's going to implement a lot of Islamic law. Right. And then you had a man who had been working with Mubarak before. Oh, wow. So the people really had no choice. You know, it was, I mean, if you want a secular state, you were either you can have a secular state with a very corrupt man, or you could have a, an Islamist state with a man who could possibly be corrupt. So mm. when the revolution started, it was, of, I mean, it was a coup. Right. It was a coup. Absolutely. of Yeah, exactly. And um, it's just because you had half the population that was disgruntled. They didn't get what they wanted. Even people who voted didn't get what they wanted. And I'm not, I'm, I wasn't with the coup. I believe that if it, a revolution comes from the people, right. then I support it 100%. Okay. My problem with Egypt is that it hurt the Palestinian people, of right. course, Absolutely. and um, that it didn't come from the people. Like, even to this day, you have so many Egyptians that still stands with Morsi. It wasn't, you know, um, mm -hmm. even a majority of the population that believed in overthrowing him. Mary, and that's the problem. But how do we make that determination what the people done and what the people didn't do? Because, I mean, it, I'm hearing so much because it takes a group of people to make a coup. Oh, definitely. It, it, it only took the military. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the military works off of minority power, but they have major power coming from the outside. But from within, from the Egyptian people, a lot of Egyptians don't agree with the military. The Egyptian military is actually very corrupt and they're responsible for killing so many Egyptians. Right. Absolutely. Now, the one thing that you brought out, uh, and these various, because they have this department, well, it's not the department, they have a group that they call jackals. See, you talked about the sexual deviant division of the CIA, yeah. NSA, whatever, what an international organization. But they have these jackals, and these are the individuals they go in, they send in to systematically destabilize the government oh, yeah. through behind the scenes maneuvering mm -hmm. and payola and information gathering that would topple and destabilize the government. Yeah, exactly, and this is what, um, I've talked with my mother before because my mother used to live, of course, in the Middle East, and our greatest countries, our greatest civilizations were Iraq, Egypt, mm -hmm. and Syria. Mm -hmm. It was okay. Damascus, Baghdad, and Cairo. And now these countries are suffering immensely. Now these mm -hmm. people are impoverished. Now people in Syria are forced to resort to eating dogs and cats and donkeys right. because they are starving when before they were eating the best food. Uh -huh. okay, okay. Well, you know, I mentioned Detroit, and the reason I mentioned Detroit when you all were talking about due process and you mentioned Hamas. Mm -hmm. In Detroit, 
you know, an economic disaster mm -hmm. that was left the men, women, and children of Detroit after a failed automotive experiment went bad. Right. And of course, the uh, experimenters were bailed out, mm -hmm. the automotive industry. Absolutely. The, in its wake were left the mm -hmm. waste. The people went back to the political process and they voted for another mayor mm -hmm. because Kwame, Kwame Kilpatrick mm -hmm. is doing 28 years right, hard time right, up yonder. Right, right. You have to mind. Right. So when they voted, uh, the majority of the populace voted for another mayor, guess what they got? A city manager. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter about the vote. That lies my very point. When it comes to the controlling factors of this country, Illuminati, mm -hmm. a Bilderberg Group, whatever you want to, Rothschild, whatever you want to deal with, mm -hmm. they don't give a flying flip about the vote. Mm -hmm. It's just the little, the little people that do. But wait a minute, you got, I mean, I can, I can point to Cynthia McKinney, Jesse Ventura. I can point to people that right, actually right. got gotten into the system, Gideon. So I can't. Yeah, I got into the. To me, that sounds McKinney like a, was. Uh, she was on the Armed Services Committee under Bush Jr. Uh -huh. They when she was, they were telling her the meeting was at one time, mm -hmm. and when she was getting to the meeting, the meeting on the Armed Services Committee was actually actually over. They were doing, they were doing all kind of underhanded stuff with Cynthia. So you can even. What did your president tell you about politics? He said, you cannot change this government from the inside. That's why I respect him. I mean, yeah. I, I disagree with that. I mean, Wait a minute, now he the man in the yeah, hot seat, now you gonna get the face. I think that as long as you, you know, as they will let, I don't think that it really matters if they let a few people into the government, as long as you lack any type of real power, exactly. then you're not exactly. really making, you're mm. not, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Right. You can get, you can saber rattle, you can shake your fist, you can do all of those things. But if you lack any real power, any ability to make some changes or make them to feel some type of hurt or repercussions for the actions they're taking, then it's just simply words that you use. Exactly. So, yeah. And they know, what, they know it's temporary. And they know exactly. it's temporary. Exactly. You go back to the uh, Kwani Muslim moon, you go back to the brother Marcy uh, in Egypt. And one of the reasons that they would never, and, and so you have to understand that. Even if we elect a person or the Muslims have elected a brother like this, it's not saying that that candidate isn't human. Thank it's you. not saying he's not going to make some mistakes. Hell, we look at the president that we have. Hello. But we're saying that give them the right to have right. their so-called Democrat. If they've elected them, they will deal with according. You can't go into an Islamic nation with capitalism democracy. Mm. It's not going to work. Right. 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 Like you know what I'm saying? They have to have their Islamic democracy. They have, we, they have, we have, in Islamic countries that are governed by Islamic rule, there are Europeans and things that they checkpoint and that they dispose of and, and, and certain leaders that are corrupt that they go by. Right. But what ends up happening is, since it's such a universal brotherhood, mm -hmm. That if you have a lot of these Islamic republics pop up or a lot of places run by Islam, it will transcend a lot of racism, a lot of this, and it will actually give the Muslims a lot of a lot of power. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to say that in the Middle East, the most successful countries have mm -hmm. been secular. In the countries that are, because they're following. It's by design, though. Yeah, by design, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like if Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Kuwait yeah, and the yeah. Gulf were to follow Islam for what it really is, mm -hmm. then they would be amazing. They would actually be giving so much of their money to Palestine and to Afghanistan. Afghanistan and mm -hmm. to Iraq, mm -hmm. but unfortunately they've completely and Somalia and the Sudan. Yeah, exactly, yeah. all yeah. over. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And but unfortunately they've become capitalists while right. claiming that they're Muslims. Mm -hmm. Well, see, this okay. is the other thing. But too. I'm gonna challenge Miriam. I want you to go to a just a, a, besides Jenga to a Muslim here and ask him about what type of uh, economic system would e Islam fall under. Now you said socialism. Socialism. Mm -hmm. You know, now Yang, I'm have to challenge you because you said it'd be equality under Islam. If you, if you here in America. If you ask the majority of Africans here in America, black Muslims here in America, because we haven't taken the time to do our research, we haven't really looked at Islam as being a valuable solution to some of our problems, social and economical problems, mm -hmm. we've only hid behind the spiritual aspect of it. We will quote a hadith, mm -hmm. Quran, we will be muhafith, Quran, we'll send a masjid, we will emulate and imitate yeah. a people so thoroughly mm -hmm. but when you go into our communities you don't see the uh, exactly, practicality exactly. and the application of islam islam when we study the way of muhammad al -Islam, we islam we see that he was a politician mm -hmm. we see that he was a uh, not just a statesman but he was a father and he was a businessman mm -hmm. we see the growth and the expansion mm -hmm. and not just under his leadership but through his wisdom and through his teaching under the leadership of the caliphate rashidun of the rightly guided people who took these rules and implemented and in fact damn to civilize the whole world mm -hmm. 
You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So okay. us as African people here in America, we have to not just capture the spiritual component and the ritualistic component of our salah and uh, the other uh, pillars that we uphold, but we must take these things and translate it into a real practical, political, yeah. economic, and educational. Okay, well, now, well, 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 well you on the hot seat, get in. You on the hot seat. Yes, sir. You on the hot seat now. This is why this is in the arena. Yes, sir. Okay, so if the Hebrew Israelites were to yes. come into government, yes. What kind of economic plan would y'all have for Sunday? Well, our economics would be a part of the commonwealth of the entire nation because that's why we... Give it a name! <laughs> well, the name would be cooperative economics. So it would be socialism. Uh, yeah. Well, you can define it under these. But see, what I, that's why I love Islam because it came out of Judaism. We have so many similar things. Right, but see, but see. But look, but hold on. Okay, let me, all right, let me, all right. Before I forget this point, because okay, I want to right, point at your president. Okay. Lied right. again to y'all. He's and doing his job. Love it. Oh, his job is to lie. True or that? You're right. What did he tell you? Under the new Obamacare, uh, the Affordable Care Act, right. he told you you would be able to keep your original provider. Get him. What did we find out that happened? Millions of people across the country found out they were not, not only were they not only able to not keep their original provider, but they couldn't even get on the program because the system they get you on there didn't work. See, this is so why. So he had to come back and correct that lie listen, on top of listen, a few other lies lie, that he had to tell lie. to support this that lie. This is why I give atheist education. Anything Barack Obama said is just the opposite. You ain't forget that out? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know. It's like playing right, the music the back with the real. If he the real says we're right? not going to raise taxes, that means he's going to raise taxes. <laughs> if he's not going to bomb Syria, he's going to bomb yeah. Syria. It's just a reverse. <laughs> oh, it's not okay. hard to figure out. Listen, there you go. Why y'all not listening? Yeah. Okay, I get you. Anything, anything Bush would do, Obama would do. Yeah. Right. Simply yeah. put. Right. So well, he has the same administration. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It doesn't Hello? really change. It has not changed. Right, but, 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 but I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get y'all to understand the language of American politics. It's just the Absolutely. opposite. Mm -hmm. So if he said he's mm -hmm. going to do something, he's not going to do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. If he's not going to do something, he's going to do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's all. But I then mean. when yeah, you have the play. populace and our children being spoon fed this shrill of uh, believable political doctrine and dogma. Well, then that's our fault because I tell my children whatever Barack Obama says is just the opposite. I exactly. Exactly. But vote for him anyway. Yeah. Well, because we got to hold on. Uh, 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 Hold on. What do you want? Hold what on. do you say? Uh, it's the lesser of two evils. This is big. Oh, Satan. you believe in the Satan. lesser of two evils? No, 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 no. You know, no, no, let's no, go no. for the little Satan. You know, <laughs> it's a little guy. No, 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 no. What would I Satan. do? Okay, Miriam. So you what say I, don't vote for him. What do you say? So, so do you yeah, believe in no, voting no, for no, the lesser no. of two we, we, evils? Cooperative economics. No, 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 no. What would I? It took me after the election to learn the speech of Barack Obama. I didn't know everything. The 2008 about, election. You broke the code. Yeah, I didn't. No, no, I learned that as he was in presidency. So I was my, like, oh, my so question what is, what do you do? I, I heard the lesser two evils coming. So what do you do? You got two politicians, <laughs> you know, okay. and so what do you do? Not vote, not yeah, participate. No vote. Absolutely. But uh, this is a problem. Uh, how, how, can, how, how can you, I think one of the biggest uh -oh. problems with uh -oh. the black uh -oh. man and woman uh -oh. Social America, engineering. Has Let's been a lack saying. of participation in the political process. Oh, wow, you've been co opted. I'm going to tell, tell you why. Oh, why. Because baby. whether we like it or not, oh. we are affected by the decisions other people make. That's true. Whether you like it or not, they make the decisions for how much money is allocated to our neighborhoods. Right. What rec centers? We have to even start politically on a local scale. If you have to run uh, a, somebody for your zone captain, a woman. We need someone that's accountable and answerable. We can't stay in our but houses and our churches. But, but political up. participation does not have to mean voting. Thank you. That's it's Thank exactly you. that. If you vote every four years and then you just go to sleep right. between these you elections, what's the full, point? That's but let me show you now. Political but see, what, what are you going to do? Well, the government is nothing. But, Advocacy. Well, the government is nothing but mafioso. When the mafia comes in your okay, neighborhood, wait a minute, do and start okay. extorting money. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, we're talking yeah. grassroots economics. Yeah. When right. they come in your neighborhood, they start extorting money from the stores that are in the neighborhood. You, what do you do? Do you start paying them that money? No. Taxes? That's what Obamacare yeah. is. That's what but the Affordable what Care Act is. is if, if, or if do you fight back? You, you, if the mafia, what you do, government. if the government comes in your neighborhood and they own everything, Hello. and your life is dependent uh -oh. upon them, you mm. first have to understand your enemy. We don't tell you to start fighting back. You understand that their struggle. They understand who they're fighting. They understand this Yahoo. Mm -hmm. They've been fighting them for years. They understand the Zionists mm -hmm. who and exactly what he's doing politically. This and don't mm -hmm. tell me that the Palestinians aren't fighting politically. 
physically, economically, and spiritually. You right. know what I'm saying? I just seen uh, yeah. my boy talking to the damn Pope. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, he, he going to the wrong. So he going to the seat of But let me see. Yeah, he may be. He may be. But that's your that's your Martin King and Malcolm. Like we had ours. Right. It takes all of that. It takes a boss to bring the attention to Hamas. I would say he's more like our Barack Obama. Or like your Barack. Yeah. It took Malcolm to bring that attention to get that support and everything yeah. that Martin need. And now we're saying we're not saying that that works. I'm not an integrationist. What I am saying it brought a lot of attention and a lot of uh focus on our problems that was happening right here. Okay. Even though they were bigger than civil rights, they were human rights right. violations, Absolutely. but at least it brought some attention. We cannot sit by and allow people to come and take our uh just do our thing while we don't try to participate in every way possible. And I'll say in my conclusion to say this, what ends up happening is once we get enough people in there, like I sent the McKinney's and stuff, and they go in there and they see the mockery, right. the joke, exactly. and they come back and they instruct us mm. on what we have to do. Mm. Me personally, I believe that Africans here in America, black people here in America, we did it one time before yes, and right. we should do it again, mm -hmm. is have our own political, black political party. Mm. I agree. And that we don't just solicit aid and help, we take it from being a domestic issue, mm. a civil issue, mm. and right. show that our human rights are still being violated. But see, this is the thing with that. You said, that's a but powerful statement. We okay. don't understand who we are as a people, even from a physical perspective, because there are many of us who look like me and you mm -hmm. think they're well, Indians and well, blacks and we, everything else. How about we understand the resources and resources of, you know, like having allies, you know what I'm saying, that like we help each other, human resources. Well, I mean, that human makes resources. sense on Because if we're level. here in America, because I remember it was so profound. This man in, in Pakistan, his grandmother got bombed, daughter, you know, blown to pieces. And he only had one message. He said, America, tell your government to stop. He's talking to us. Exactly. Yeah. There we oh, go. Oh, yeah. That's what exactly. I was actually saying, did y'all know that Saddam Hussein had a letter addressed to the American people? Well, not only Saddam Hussein, so yeah. did uh, Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Yeah. So did uh, he was trying to give us some money. Yeah. Yeah. So did he yeah. was yeah. But, I, but I mean, while, right before he was to be executed, <laughs> right. he wrote a letter saying, stop your government, your government is wrong. How many Americans know that a world leader addressed them? That's right. how special the American people are. They're given this pri these priorities, and they're saying, please tell your government to stop killing our people. We're begging you, please stop. And Americans are like, I don't even know what country you well, are. I don't even tell. know where you are geographically. Right. Whereas it's, everyone it's cares about the American people, American people don't. don't care. Well, it's not that they don't care because we supposedly touted to be some of the most caring people on the planet. Lie. Benazir Bhutto Definitely don't care. told the world that uh, who was his name? The guy that they claimed oh, that they, Osama bin Laden, that Osama yeah, bin been Laden who had been dead two years. Yeah, killed by Khalid. Uh, yeah, he was killed by Khalid, Khalid Sheikh. Sheikh. Yeah. World leader, prime minister of Pakistan. What happened a few weeks after that? She was killed. Out of him. Man, people don't even know who their state representative is. Oh, exactly. Let alone a world leader. That's the point. I rest my That's the point that I'm making. If we don't get involved, Football, if we don't, basketball, exactly, all apple pie, if we don't talk to the mediums, if we don't talk to uh, the Lebanese and the other people being not just in the Middle East, I'm talking about our Somalian brothers and sisters and the Sudanese and all of these people being oppressed, then we won't understand the actual form the revolution has to take. Well, let me ask you this. Remember, well, Ma uh, remember Malcolm, yeah. where did he go? Africa, the Middle East and Africa. He went to the world court. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, okay. this is the thing. Who else has gone to the world court and then but the world court it's been co-opted? Co it's been co-opted. Co no doubt. What was the step before that? He first, you know, after making his Hodge, right. he first did the traveling. Yes, he did. He right. had to have a global view. A global. He had to see see that he was connected long, more than just Boo Boo. Absolutely. More than just Johnny Boy on the corner. Exactly. He, he, was to he was gathering allies. Yeah, he was yeah. gathering, gathering and he allies. And he was. When he was he was so eloquent Absolutely. and articulate that yes. when he stated his case, they yes. even reaffirmed yes. that that is those are human rights uh, violations. Right. Exactly. And Malcolm, stop going back as a uh, on a civil rights violation. Absolutely. Take it to the to the world court, and if you do, we will back you. Now, but yeah. the first he had to understand 
their struggles. When he saw right. that, wait a minute, he saw in Palestine what was yes. happening. Yes. He said, damn, that's like gentrification in our neighborhood. Right. Right. We're being pushed out. That's We're right. being moved in. Under that's so right. Talk. Not, and this is not to belittle your struggle, yes. definitely. Oh, no, that's not, not that we should you know connect the struggle. Right. That's the way so to that's do right. it. When we, when, we, when we understand globally that oppression mm. doesn't have a color and ethnicity mm. that it can attack you, and we start to identify, and we start to sit with our counterparts and find out their strategy. Yes. Like I said with Hamas, I don't know yeah. all the internal working mechanisms, exactly. but I saw that they had strong. So it was I saw they were more than just terrorists. Mm, I saw right. that or what they were labeled terrorists. I saw they had social programs. Absolutely. So I said, OK, this I get it now. So did Gaddafi. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and not just Malcolm X, actually Muhammad Ali, mm. Muhammad Ali, exactly. you know, the entire exactly. world knew about him. And when he objected to fighting in the Vietnam yes. world, that was they worldwide. That was worldwide. The Muslim world, the Arab world loved Muhammad Absolutely. Ali. And I, and I guarantee there were Arabs that were like, yes. that did not know about the black plight in yes. the United States before right. men like Malcolm X and yes. Muhammad Ali that came out. You don't have any of these people. Now Now you have people in the Middle East seeing black people like Barack Obama. Now let me ask right. you. And that's the problem. No and, 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 yeah. and if it's okay that's for you okay. to ask this panel, because see the question we left okay. off with uh, Malcolm X uh, going to the world court. Now you made the statement and I totally agree with you. The world court has been compromised. They have been bought by America, the industrialists, oh, all the, yeah. the major. But what if However, we went, if our case was presented to the world court, what do you think would happen? I think if we go in mass numbers, there'd be change. It's just like how they got Mamiya off death row. Pam, Yang was here, Pam yeah. came down and said, man, they had no choice. When you come in mass numbers like that, they move. I think they absolutely. I think that if we went to the world court and it was brought up as a humanitarian problem, you have to understand that there are a lot of people that are disgruntled, a lot of countries disgruntled with the policies and procedures of America. Right. But like you said, one of the key things is having a foothold in. This is why you and I and every black man and black woman here in America is labeled as a terrorist because right. we already, from the inception of this country, have a legitimate beef. Exactly. A crime has been committed. Exactly. They're scared of when the Islam comes to you and when these certain things come to you, that they, they terrifies them. But when I think the world sees that you have citizens who are uh, concerned and who are uh, uh, disgruntled with their conditions and right. disgruntled with world conditions, mm -hmm. then you create that dialogue. Yes. You create that network. Yes, you start right. really, you start to work. And what ends up happening is just like we look at a handful of Zionists over here who have mm -hmm. so much pull and power. Right. It's because of the political net connects and the economic maneuvering and Absolutely. the policy and the lobbying and things of that nature. We have to implement those. There's nothing holding us back from doing the same thing that every other ethnicity and race does over here. Well, the mental change. Now, I want to it's, ask Miriam about us. that. What about the world court? And if the world court, do you believe the world court has been co-opted? And if not, if our case was presented, what do you think the response, response well, would be? Well, I definitely believe that not only the world court, but the entire United Nations is controlled by the United States. It's Absolutely. controlled by the UK. I mean, even now in the United Nations, it's five powers on the Security Council that yes. control everything. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. You still got Russia and China that back away. Yeah, exactly. You have Russia like and Syria. China. Back away. They, may, they have their interests, they too. They made Barack Obama back down from Syria. Exactly, but they have their interests, too. Oh, you, well, don't, you don't have <laughs> countries like Palestine or Pakistan or Afghanistan that are on the Security Council. Right. Mm. Your main, it, it, it is the, all these imperialistic nations. Exactly. Where who is more imperial than the United States, the UK, Russia, China, and right. France? Industrialization. Yeah, industrialization. And um, yeah, I definitely don't believe it would make a difference. I believe they hear you out like they hear out Palestinians. Right. It's like, we're sorry. So we're you, sorry. you all That's have it. already taken your case oh, yeah, to the world. Oh, Palestinians mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. It's useless. A sovereign nation mm -hmm. with a flag. I mean, if the United Nations gave Palestinian lands to the Zionists. It helped mm. create Israel. How are we supposed to trust the United Nations? Now, why should anybody trust the United mm -hmm. Nations? That's See, that's point. why people like myself go to the spiritual realm, because what else you have left? Give I mean, we just talked about it. We we you us. got revolution, go. baby. The we revolution ain't happened. Go. You, you got go. the world court, but the world court has been bought out. I just find it funny how all the spiritual people are poor. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting we ain't got the money, bro. That's, that's my whole thing. You know, it's like you say, you even though we you, we may know what's gonna happen, we don't say we don't become self defeatist. We don't say that right. we don't go. Exactly. It's just like exactly. It's just like one of the we have to become, we have to have that muscle. Mm -hmm. I right. would encourage, you know, it's like my that's my problem with Saudi still having the monarchy and things like this. Here you have money, the wealth, the resources, and you don't empower um 
Islam. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Not a Saudi thing, not a thing, but you don't empower uh, Islam, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. So I think that until we get so much out of the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. have to back up, man. Our prophet, Islam, when he first started out, he married uh, Khadija. Yeah. She owned businesses. Right. right. One of his right hand men, Abu Bakr, mm -hmm. who may Allah be pleased with Abu Bakr, had money. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yes, they sir. had businesses. They had That's things. Right. It wasn't, they, and though he talking about the prophet, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure he could invoke the curse of God on somebody and make them fall dead like uh -oh. that. I, I don't doubt it. Look you know out. what I'm saying? But he had practical, he showed us practical he ways. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, 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 my mother used to always say, don't be so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. No right. doubt. You no see doubt. what I'm saying? No so doubt. until we have that force behind us, we look at the great empires of Africa on this sure. line. Uh, Man of Musa, they used to call it Kanka Musa, was his African yeah. name, but Man of Musa, mm -hmm. who destabilized a whole region with his riches. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Songhai Empire, the Mali Empire. Mm -hmm. So you had industry, you had these things that back. Somewhere along the way, us as black people here in America, and I don't know what happened in the Middle East and other places, mm -hmm. but us as black people here in America simply left off the rational and practical application of our spirituality mm -hmm. and went straight to the spirituality. Right. We had one of the coldest, <laughs> strongest nations mm -hmm. that didn't even follow Orthodox Islam. There has never been a power structure like the Nation of Islam since the days of Elijah Muhammad. Mm. Well, I mean, you got the Sunnis and the Shiites that are still Islamists I'm talking in, about, in the land. Yeah, well, I'm talking so about here in America, right. okay. black people, a program that right. benefited black people right. as Elijah Muhammad's program, economic program of stores. You've never, I'm talking about, I challenge anybody to do it from the, to define any program economically was as strong as that. Oh, it's you know a powerful, what I'm to this and, day and, even. And, but here it is, here's the funny thing. But I tell it, they got co-opted. Co they got co-opted because right. here's what they had. No doubt. They got co-opted because they had the Islamic disciplines, mm. but they didn't have the Islamic tenements. That, uh -oh. mm. Look so they that. couldn't They couldn't stay strong because uh, Far Muhammad was Allah. It wasn't the real tenements of Islam, mm -hmm. but they took the disciplines. Don't yeah. drink, don't smoke, right. don't do right. it. Right. Right. And they built the empire on that. So right. how much more so if we take the disciplines and add them to the religious practices yes. with those empires come up? But that's yeah. how they destroyed them. Mm -hmm. He had the disciplines, but he right. didn't have the tenants. Mm -hmm. So you said man was a guy, this and that. So it was bound to fall apart. Yeah. But it just showed us within the just the disciplines, mm. getting the brothers to adhere to the disciplines of Islam, what they could accomplish. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and the same thing is happening in the Arab world where you have all these Muslim nations that have banned alcohol, that have said women can't drive, which has nothing to right. do with Islam, mm -hmm. and all these strict conservative laws. And then you have um, Yemen, Gaza, and the Sudan mm -hmm. suffering, mm -hmm. being impoverished, you right. know, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to them. All that matters to them is that nobody can drink. Right. You know, right. it's absolutely ridiculous. Right. That's not what it, Islam is about action. It's yes. about helping your brothers and right. sisters. It's about never leaving a Muslim or a, any human being down. You right. know, you should always help lift him up. And that's what the Gulf is doing wrong. They're not following Islam and it's true. Well, them. now you have to also remember now, and this is part of the economics and the debauchery of Islam as well as the region, the first slave trade was the sub-saharan slave trade that's still going on mm -hmm. slavery has never stopped mm -hmm. slavery is here today mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. the sex slave trade women in slavery children in mm -hmm. slavery is at a rampant pace right now mm -hmm. this is helping to fuel america's economy yeah. because right. america's number one export is pornography yes right. Absolutely. That pornography goes off into child sex slavery, right. mm -hmm. women Smith sex family. slavery, bestiality, right. mm -hmm. a whole litany of ills that America makes its money off corrupting the world. So at the end of the day, when we talk about the Endless War Act, mm -hmm. it is a war on normalcy, the okay. nuclear family, the environment, and the indigenous people of the world. Well, y'all always right. burn it up on this show. With that, <laughs> mm, we're going we to have everybody back on the panel. Miriam, I'm going to need you back. Of course. Yes. Oh, Yanga, yes. we definitely need you back. Get in. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh so, man, these five people. We're going to wrap it up. Holla. We'll see y'all the Sunday after next, and we out. Peace. 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 Man, thank you, man. Oh, That's my brother. It's all.